Hi friends, welcome back to another video slash episode of the James Red Podcast. Today I am with a guy named Kyle Sipple, aka Calypso, which is just the greatest <laughs> Instagram name on planet Earth. Uh, and I am I'm quite jealous. I think I think James Lipso would really not go over as well. <laughs> I'm into it though. You could. That's never too late for a switch. I think I might. I might try it. I just worry that I would lose all my relationships. Uh, so Kyle is a, a travel photographer based in Salt Lake City, where I live. So we we breathe the same dry valley air. We and, love it. Yes, love it, and uh, not so good if you're asthmatic. But it's a it's a you know it's a beautiful location. But uh, right now we're experiencing a storm. Uh, near where we both live. So if you hear an explosion or my roof rips off, you know why. But I will link below to Kyle's things. And uh, Kyle, first off, how are you today? I'm doing incredibly well. Like you said, the storm's outside, so that's always exciting. It's always a good time to be in Utah when it's May, when it's like 85 degrees and sunny the entire day, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, it sounds like your roof's going to get blown off by some lightning. So... Utah is pretty. Is it, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's yeah. Utah just gets weird like that. We just mix it up every single day. You can have any combination of weather you can possibly think of. It's uh, I think Utah is a very bipolar place when it comes to weather. What the transition oh, yeah. from winter to summer is just it's, it's harsh. depressing. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> So I want to very quickly talk about the the history of how I found you and what I've learned about you recently, specifically. Uh, so I originally found you on Flickr. I, a long time ago, back in the day, I don't know if you've ever heard of this thing, Flickr. Uh, everywhere. May it rest in peace. May it rest in peace. It's still there. It's just mm, kind of still there. No, there, he's chatting away in, uh, in social media heaven with MySpace, right? Oh, for sure. But, but uh, I came across your film photography. I thought it was incredibly interesting because I was, I was heavily into some pretty – affected film looks and you had certain photos that had this really intense green fade to the shadows and uh just semi-expired film looks i was i was absolutely fascinated by this i think i stayed connected to you from all that time until now and then kind of refound you and said oh this is an interesting person i'd like to talk to him (laughs) and he lives in salt lake city so this is good uh i also like to look and see if I can find a YouTube channel or YouTube videos uh, around the person that I'm speaking to, if, if there is one that exists. And t- correct me if I'm wrong, there is a channel with your name where uh, there's a video from 2012 of your friend shooting a pumpkin with a World War II rifle. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I forgot that map found its way onto YouTube. Yeah. I have a friend that had like a old like bayonet gun. And he definitely shot a pumpkin. I totally forgot about that. Uh, I think. Even well, I think that's on YouTube. I think that uh, you know you, everybody's got to have a friend with a bayonet gun. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly right. And that's what I still think. So I haven't added another friend that has a bayonet that I know of. And if I do, I have to kick one of them out. One of the right. two. So. Well, two. Yeah, but yeah, too many. That's and definitely a thing. Yeah, okay. out in the, like the West Desert, we were running around with a World War II rifle. He, sh- he yeah. shot a pumpkin and then ran towards the pumpkin. And it looked like some sort of, you know, D-Day extreme war footage. Oh, yeah. You're running with him and he started stabbing the pumpkin with the bayonet. And I'm just, I'm happy that you guys survived that encounter. Me too, yeah. It was it was basically like the beaches of Normandy that day uh, in the West Desert. And- mm-hmm. A lot but less people, but yes, overall. Yes, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay. that's a that's a thing that exists, and I'm glad that you found that because uh, I think that's probably my one of my only staples of YouTube that I've actually contributed to. So good good <laughs> to know that that's uh, that's being associated with my name. Hey, you should be proud of that, man. Uh, so I'm so uh, what I what I'm curious about uh, first off, and we'll dig into your work a little bit, and you sure. you, you do a, what I would consider travel photography, but. Uh, How would you describe the creative pursuits that you're up to on a daily basis? Um, Honestly, like at this point in my life, like I'm not like going super hard after like Instagram fame or that kind of thing or like um, getting into like the influencer direction that a lot of like uh, creative people that I know that I'm friends with and just that whole 
group of people has kind of gone after. Um, basically, like for me, especially like these last couple of years, it's just been like a large focus on um, on maintaining like personal work that I'm proud of myself and like sharing that with like friends and family and like documenting that in like travel journals, um, stuff that I have been like just creating along the way. I think that's what's going to end up having the most value for me. Um, and I think there were some times when I kind of got distracted away from like what I thought my goals with photography were. And, um, I think I finally got to a point where I'm bringing it back around to where like, it's more meaningful to me now. And like the basis of like what I'm trying to do is just create meaningful work, whether that's meaningful to me or just like those around me. But I just like want to be creating something that like has lasting impact. I'm so glad you brought that up because uh, the, I spend all of my time on this channel talking about trying to pursue more meaningful yeah. work and and uh, not just spend your time creating work that's pretty and just feels fun and nice. So that's awesome. I think we're going to have a good conversation. Uh, so so tell me about your progression as a photographer and sort of the origin of how you got yeah. into this and where, where you're at now. Yeah, so... Um... I guess it kind of started when, I mean, just growing up, like I was in like, I was in Boy Scouts and my, my dad is a big outdoors guy. My grandpa was a big outdoors guy. And like, so growing up, like so much of my childhood was just focused around like being outside, going on hikes, at, like every weekend with my family, um, going on camping trips with my dad. Um, and it was always like around here, around in, in Utah and um, so that's kind of where I got like my appreciation for the outdoors. And I was like, man, this place is awesome. And what's weird is like, I, like in elementary school or middle school and everyone is like wearing Hollister and whatever, and wants to be living in California, like talking about how much they didn't like Utah cause we don't have the beach. And I was just like, so perplexed when I was younger. Cause I was like, like, I seriously love this place. I think it's super pretty. Like I like the beach too, but like, have you been to these mountains right here? They're like 20 minutes away and you can like it's an absolute party. So at, at some point I like got, I, I became really focused on trying to like show off Utah. Like that became mm -hmm. like a big thing for me. I was like, I love this place. I think it's incredibly pretty. I think I am just infinitely inspired by so many things um, that are just surrounding me that like, I want to be able to share that with other people. Um, and that's kind of how I got into like the social media side of it and like started sharing my photos and started like on Flickr and Tumblr is how like where I was posting the majority of my work before like Instagram really came along. Um, and then at the same time, like when I started first started to like pick up a camera, um, I, when I was younger, my, one of my best friends, same friend actually that has the world war two bayonet, oddly enough. This is an um, interesting friend. Yeah. He, his dad had like a nice DSLR that we would, um, that we would borrow sometimes. And like, he, he was my snowboarding buddy. So we would go snowboarding. And like, I remember, did he carry the gun with him when he snowboarded? No, no guns while snowboarding. That, That's that I a remember. quick way to impale yourself. It, yes, incredibly. Yeah. And so, but we had this DSLR that we would put in like a Tupperware thing because we didn't have a case for it. And we would take it snowboarding and like take pictures like in the mountains and um, take pictures of each other snowboarding and all of that. And uh, that's how I first started. Like, I was like, oh man, I kind of really like taking pictures. And then um, I kind of got into a little bit of video stuff in, in high school, but um, it wasn't until right as I was graduating when I like, I took like a photo class, like in my, in my school and I was like borrowing cameras. I like picked up a film camera for the first time. I um, just got really into it, like right as I was about to graduate, which was like the best possible time for me to find something that like was like just helped me stay driven. So, um, so yeah, like picking that up right when I was like about to turn 18, it just like gave me such a strong direction for like all this time since I'm 25 now. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's just been awesome. Like, and how different it's been like initially I seriously just wanted to show off Utah. And then as I got older and got more, um, more chances to like travel alone or travel where I wanted to and just like not necessarily with my family and have it be like a family trip or whatever. As I got older, I was like, okay, like I can get one of my friends, we can get it, you know, like a hundred bucks for gas and drive wherever we want on the Western side of the country and sleep in the car and like do whatever, just to like take photos and like share that experience. And I've done so many trips like that, where it's just like thrown together. Let's go here and figure out what we're going to do along the way. And 
stay wherever we feel like it when we get there. And I've slept in so many cars. I've slept in just absurd places, uh, just in the pursuit of like just having fun, taking photos of my friends is kind of like what it got to. Um, and yeah, I have, that was a long winded answer for your question, but no, that was, yeah, it's kind of yeah. just been, be as uh, be as long winded as you would like. I, I think I, I'm really <laughs> enjoying this. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the origin, I guess. It was just a lot of me loving the outdoors, with my family, and then wanted to show it off and just kind of at the same time, I accidentally found cameras in my hands and I was like, Oh, this is fun. Did you, did you find that photography when you were younger and maybe even now, did you find that it helped you avoid other things that were maybe not so healthy for you or uh, maybe yeah. kept you occupied so that you didn't become depressed or, you know, what happened? Yeah, you? for sure. So oddly enough, so like my, when I was in high school, I, I played soccer for like the, for my high school team. And I ended up getting like super injured at one point and I couldn't play anymore again after that. And what it, which had been so weird for me because my time had been like almost exclusively filled up with soccer like my entire life from when I was like five, I was very mm -hmm. serious about it. Um, and it was honestly like it totally, I mean, losing that part of my life, I, I was like, okay, I kind of don't really know what to do now, like outside of like school and like friends, but that's it's like, I need something else. And like, that's what photography became for me. So it's, it's hard for me to say what I was able to avoid with it, but it certainly gave me like, a sense of purpose that I don't know what I would have found if I didn't have it, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I just, it kind of just filled a void. Yeah. I, I think it's probably really good for people who are, uh, who are growing up and who are young to focus on something that has an output to it. As, as, and not, and not that there's anything wrong with spending your time. So for example, you know, I think I like video games, mm -hmm. right? Now, a lot of people are making a, f a fine penny online making video games yeah. and actually turning that in, into something that has a lot of purpose to it. But, uh, but a lot of people, you know, it's just a fun thing, but it doesn't necessarily, unless you try to have like an output mm -hmm. element to it and, and you're not doing something that you're sharing with the world. And, um, and so I think photography is an, is an interesting type of thing to go after it, or any art form that involves creating if you're, coming up and you're, you're a kid, it, it helps you grow in so many ways, I think. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. So, wh so where you're at now is you're, it seem, uh, you seem like you spend most of your time on your, on Instagram, correct? <laughs> as far as like sharing my photos. Yeah. But I'm like, I, you know, for the last year, especially, I just haven't really felt that need to post on Instagram and they, and they've kind of done things with the app that I, I really don't like. And like, uh, my OCD kind of kicks in and it's hard for me to look at Instagram, but um, so I, I actually, I have two Instagram accounts. Um, my main one where I've shared the majority of my work, but, um, I, and that's Calypso, right? Yeah, that's right. And like at, at years ago, I started like a secondary Instagram where I wanted to, to just be like a journal for me. So that's actually something I use a, a ton. Um, so I, I, I just like a few of my closest friends follow it. And, uh, like I, I, I think I have like 15 followers maybe, um, and that's what I use like the app for most. And every once in a while when I'm thinking about it, I'll put, I'll put a, put a post up on Kylipso. But, um, but yeah, I, I like, I think Instagram as just like a basic app is it's, it's such, it revolutionized photography in general. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't like pursue that as much as I used to, but definitely use the app a bunch still for just kind of, logging my life away and making sure that I'm not like forgetting about stuff that I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, so what takes up like on a daily basis, what, what does the day look like for you? What's taking up your time? Yeah. So, um, I, a few years ago I did like freelance photography full time for a minute. Um, and that's kind of like <laughs> for a minute, I like, for... that's a, that's an answer for people who are definitely, uh, who sometimes are not cut out to be freelancers. I yeah. did it for a minute and I almost died yeah. <laughs> or I'm I, still I didn't it. almost starve, but yeah, I mean, like I did it for about six months, pretty close to about six months. And I, there were a lot of things that I really liked about it. Um, but I'm somebody that who's, who's kind of just always had a job since I was like 16. And so I, I don't know, it freelance felt, it just, it was a little too uncomfortable for me and like kind of what made me sad it's about inconsistent sort of, it, yeah, inconsistent. I didn't like having to rely on photo for me has always been like 
such a strong creative outlet and kind of my like escape from a lot of things. So like having to rely on that for like to live was, I, I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't like it. <laughs> and so I, I was just talking to another guy uh, who, who I, who I uh, made a video. So I actually recorded one right before this and now I'm recording okay. this one. And which is nice. Cause I've, I'm, I finally reached, a place where I have two conversations in one day. That's a good feeling. Nice. But, uh, he was talking about how he does freelance photography and yeah. he was saying that he has to maintain his passion project over here, which is actually walking up to strangers on the street, taking their photo and learning about them and then sharing that in a, a, a story in a really unique, interesting way. Um, but he was saying that he has to maintain that because this, this freelance thing can sort of, uh, can, it, it might not fulfill you if you right. lean completely on that uh, because the thing that makes you money a lot of times isn't fully a passion project. You can't quite rely, you can rely on it for money, but you can't quite rely on it to, uh, to keep you filled up mm -hmm. with the meaning that you're trying to do with your photography. So I think for yeah. anybody who's a freelance creator, it's always a good idea to maintain both sides, yeah. both pillars of that. And like, I, I know that's something that like almost everyone who's, who does something creative like that for work, um, like as freelance struggles with, like I, I know incredibly successful photographers who go through phases where they feel completely uninspired with their work because it's just been like work, 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 um, and like all stuff for clients. And then they're not left with time to do photography for the reasons why they started. So I don't, I honestly, like when I was doing freelance, I was, that was kind of like my low point with my, with my photography, like the time when I was like least happy with it, I was like, um, overly critical about like stuff I was doing. I was, uh, I just kind of forgotten why, like I really got into it in the first place. And I became like hyper focused on things that really di didn't used to matter to me and I didn't want to matter to me. Um, so yeah, like the way I feel my days now is like I started soon after that. Um, I had a friend um, refer me to this uh, this software company. So I work for an like an uh, education technology software co company. So mm -hmm. I can at least feel good about the work that we're doing, um, and I do. So I work at a software company. Like that's my day job or whatever. I um, there most days during the week. I work from home. It's honestly a great job and it's been oh, super good yeah it's been the perfect job for someone like me who also wants like time for like my photography for example and like the best part about living in salt lake is like that i'm able to maintain such a fantastic work life balance and like with what i want to be doing like i want to be in the mountains like i winter summer whatever i can work during the day and then like head up to the mountains as soon as i'm off work or come home first and then go to the mountains it's just like unbelievably convenient and so um i feel like finally like i've hit like a perfect work-life balance where mm, that's I, hard I, to find I, sometimes then yeah i know it is hard to find and i got super lucky like with the company that i work for so i work downtown and then i live in cottonwood heights so it's like about 20 minutes away max and i just i get the most of both best of both worlds i think mm -hmm. i would say and uh for for anyone for everyone who doesn't know it's like this area all, all across the Salt Lake Valley, you're you're probably going to live about 15 minutes from the opening of a canyon everywhere yeah. you go, and so there's that aspect of it, right? So you can, and also it's a very developed place here. Uh, it's actually a city, and you know we have Adobe headquarters just down south. Silicon and, slopes. Yeah, so, right, right, right. And uh, but so you can go, you can go work for Adobe, right? Do their things, and then you come home. You go up into the canyon or on the weekend, you can drive three hours and be in Moab, which is just one of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth. And so it's, it's this really interesting dynamic um, of, uh, of a bunch of things coming together to make for a really interesting lifestyle, I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely true. So I know. So uh, so how would you describe what you what you're currently trying to do with the photos that you do share? With, with the ones that I do share, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to say, like, I, um, I, I'd like to think that I never got away from my goal of just kind of like inspiring people to like get outside with their friends and like see things like, that's kind of like what I've always wanted to show like on my Instagram. It's, it's not like, um, 
the stuff that I've shared isn't like my most artsy stuff or whatever, but it's kind of just the stuff that's like, this is a memory that I have from where I was and who I was with. And like these photos sum up that memory. And that's kind of what I like to share the most is just like good memories and like just, I guess, good vibes, you know, like it's just, uh, it's, it's kind of just what I like people to, I mean, that is my life. So like, I like showing, showing that part of my life. Um, but I want people to feel like that type of thing isn't unattainable. So like, it's so easy to get caught up in like, um, life envy or like the true definition of like wanderlust, I guess you could say, but like, um, like for some reason, when I see pictures of people like in like Santorini, Greece, or like some random place like Bali or something, I don't know. It's just like, sometimes it can kind of just feel like that's not my life and that couldn't yeah. be not necessarily that it, like yeah i mean people you can obviously save up money and go on those trips if you want and that's and, and that's a luxury that that some people have but like um i like the fact that so much of what i've made is like and like what i've created all just comes from like trips and um like experiences that i've had so close to my home that like didn't cost me more than 50 bucks to like for gas to get like a few hundred miles away or even mm -hmm. just like in the mountains behind my house it's just like i those are real experiences that i had that were some of my favorites and it didn't require some massive large sacrifice life's sacrifice or or anything like that and finding people that you're able to share those experiences with is also an, another piece of that but yeah that's this kind of just what i'm what i've trying to to share is feel like a realistic version of that that kind of travel stuff like I don't I don't know like obviously I like traveling to faraway places but I I love the experiences I have close to home and sometimes those are like just as good or better than ones you, you would spend thousands of dollars on to uh, go to another continent or whatever yeah I love that perspective I also love the perspective that you said about uh, what you're trying to create and that you are sharing you're just sharing your memories in the hopes of inspiring people to go explore. Yeah. And that's, that's really interesting. I like that. Uh, so one of the things that I've noticed that you do on your account is you, you use galleries heavily. I do. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very interested in this and I'm curious what, what was the thought process behind using the galleries to help tell a story? Yeah. So I, I know like that's, that, that was one of my favorite things that Instagram added. And I've, I've always been somebody that's like been into like photo sets I've been into because like the way I think about like sharing photos socially has always been kind of like the Tumblr or Flickr style. So like Tumblr, like you create a post and you're adding up to like 10 photos mm -hmm. um, and arranging them and like telling a story with it. And so that's the way I always like think about stuff like that is, and that's how I've always approached it is like, it's, I'd rather not tell an entire story with a single photo if I have like five photos that I think could could give a more like well-rounded experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so like when they did add that, I was I, I was pretty hyped because I was like, man, this is exactly um, what I'm into. And some people get hyper focused about like their feeds looking a certain way and like sharing. And so like they'll go on a trip and they'll be sharing like five photos from this trip spaced out like throughout yeah. a few months. And I'm yeah. just like, I just got back from this trip. Here's 10 photos from that trip. Like, and it's like here in a photo set. Like that's. And then, and then they like, do this thing where they, they, they take the picture, crop it really wide and then make it go across three different yeah, photos. I've definitely seen that one as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> Which I don't particularly enjoy. I don't. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not into like the trickery stuff. I'm just like, here are 10 photos that I feel like sum up my, this trip I went on or like. Well, the I problem just, is, is, is like, if you, if you, go to there if you're in your feed the photo pops up in your feed you see the side of a rock yep <laughs> and then the next one is like half of a waterfall and then the next one is the other half of the waterfall and another rock and it's yeah. and so that's not interesting for a feed it's only interesting for your profile feed right that's very true yeah so i people it is definitely problematic yeah people have weird ways about going about how they share those but uh yeah i don't know i just i i love i love photo sets and like i'm glad twitter kind of did the same things i would share photos on twitter from time to time and um 
I just it I just think it's it's just better for like storytelling to like include more photos. I I like giving like different um viewpoints from like a certain place. I like that. I like just I, I don't know. Like I think it I think it vibes very well with like what I like to do with my photography. I think it that's exactly how I'm like built. That's how I think. I think in like photo sets all the time. Like I'm like, oh man, this photo and the, the like this photo would look so good together. And like I think about displays. I think about like that, you know. Mm, like, okay. On my wall, I think about like very physical things. I think about like digital things. I'm like, man, these these photos look so good together. Like they offer two different two different perspectives on like the same thing, maybe. But yeah, well, and you can provide entirely. You, you can provide depth and context. Oh, for in, sure. In a really yeah. special way because it's like you know, if you're taking, let's say, you go to a hot spring, right? You take a photo, a wide photo of your friends sitting in the hot spring, and then you take, you, you go, okay, how can I sort of turn this into a more uh, depth rich experience for mm -hmm. the person who's seeing it? You can zoom in on their hand resting on the side of the thing, yep. and you can maybe just get a shot of the steam coming off. All of this yeah. stuff helps for sure. create a more immersive experience. And I think that a lot of people, I, I don't see a lot of people utilizing galleries. In a really I, I way. honestly don't either, which is really weird to me because. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, it can kind of go against the Instagram philosophy of like, like getting a ton of content in your like clip to be loaded out, just constantly being like, because I mean, like if you're constantly sharing 10 photos at a time, you kind of run out of content quick if your goal is to be uh, posting as much as possible. But for like people like me, like I don't care when I post, I don't care how long it's been. I don't care about posting on like a set schedule like a lot of people seem to. Um like it works for me, but I can see like why people who are very much into the Instagram game itself um, kind of stray away from it because it just doesn't like go with that uh, mentality very well, I suppose. I, it goes, I think it's a good example of how Instagram and any social network, any platform where you're distributing content and sharing things can be used so many different ways. Like yeah. it's, it's very easy. And I do this. I think this is a potential weakness of mine. I can get sort of closed minded into my way of creating things. And what this does is one, it makes me only create the way that I would create, which has its downfalls. And so sometimes I get pushed out of this bubble because I will go hang out with another creator for a little bit. Yeah. And then I watch them create and it, my mind explodes because I, I, I never thought about doing it that way. Mm -hmm. And, and it helps me accomplish my my goal in a better way. Um, I forget what the second thing I was going to say was. I'm sure it was interesting. <laughs> I believe you. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate the support. Uh, so the problem is, is I try to I try to do two thoughts at the same time, and that's a really bad idea. I should yeah. probably stick with one and, <laughs> and just not overwhelm my brain. Okay. Uh, so another thing that I wanted to ask you was – what are what what is something that you are where's an area that you're trying to grow as a creator as a whole oh man trying to grow it's I, i'd like to see myself um i'd like to push myself into like additional mediums of of creating like i want to get back into video like i i was back in high school that's kind of like how i got into like cameras and all that with your with your uh, war videography with the pumping yeah, with war, like i i i, I like it was in uh um like I took classes like digital broadcasting I took some other stuff in high school that was very focused on like um mainly video and I would like go film like sports games and like create highlight videos that kind of thing just like anything and like I used to go like film bands playing and like um create like videos like that and that's something that I I, I really want to get more into is because like even like I'll look through like the videos on my iPhone and I have like great videos on my, and like the, the iPhone camera is just ridiculous. Like the fact that I can take that quality of video from a Well, and since is, they added that second camera for the plus, yeah. that was, oh, that yeah. was the best thing Apple has ever done. Yeah. <laughs> to their it's phone. fantastic. Oh, yeah. The telephoto the phone in the first place, that kind of that. revolution, but yeah, but added, like, I just have the so little many thing on the back. Yeah. It, it changed right my in. life. Yeah. It's fantastic. But yeah, so I have like, so many like amazing videos from places that kind of just like hang out on my phone that I haven't really done anything with. So um, something I want to get into is like creating video again that I'm like proud of and like sharing that video. Um, I, I 
I get worried about like how critical I can be on myself sometimes. So then like oftentimes I'll be just like not, I'll create a bunch of stuff and then just not share it. Cause I have too much social anxiety or whatever, but like I, uh, yeah, I want to get into video and I want to share some videos with people. I think that's, that's going to be my next goal. Mm-hmm. Do you, uh, so I'm, I'm curious what areas you feel like you, uh, as a creator that you critique yourself, what do you struggle with in that? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good question. I, it can be like anything. Like I get hyper obsessive over like tones in my photos, and like if they look different on my phone than they do on my computer, I get and it. And like I I get so wrapped up into that kind of thing. I'm like, oh, and, or even when it comes to like photo sets, and I can't decide on like the ten photos I want to share, or whatever. That I I get so like I'll talk myself out of posting completely because I'm just like, all right, well, mm-hmm. I I I know all these photos, so. Every now and then I'll find myself in this place where I've spent way too long trying to post something. And I, I'm like, what am I doing with my and life? That's what I don't like. Like that's, that's the, where I don't want to ever be. Like, I don't like feeling like that. I don't feel like I need, I don't want to feel like I have to post for some reason, but I also don't want to like be like scared to, I guess. Mm. And that's kind of like, I, I built like a semi like big audience. And I sometimes I'm like, I'm like nervous to share stuff for these people who willingly chose to like follow me so it's it's like why am i nervous to show people something that they like contractually agreed to see by clicking follow yeah so like i don't know i get i like i'm in my head a a lot when it comes to that kind of thing what Um, what i've learned is and i've been able to uh been blessed enough to work with a couple of creators that are that are what i would consider you know pretty pretty successful creators uh, and the more I've learned about even the bigger ones, like the, the bigger, bigger ones, everybody has their own version of the insecurities that they're uh, about what they're up to. It's something that plagues us all in a different way. And it's like, they don't, they don't, they don't always, they, they go away, but at the same time, they don't all go away and they'll shift into new ones that you never expected would come about as you grow. Yep. And it's, it's almost like our brains wired to, <laughs> And I don't know if this is our, our negativity bias that's sort of built into our head, but like as soon as we overcome one, our brain will find the next one in four and a half seconds. And it's re- it can be really detrimental if you don't yeah. pay close attention to it. But but yeah, it's and also creating videos, I can watch my videos back and sort of see how it's portrayed or I can share my photos and... I can't, I don't think I can get a true third person view, but I can get like right in the middle of first person and third person, yeah. I think, and understand what people are maybe thinking. And uh, it portrays this idea that I don't, that I may not, it can portray this idea that my insecurities are not things that I truly struggle with. And so if it's true for me, it's true for any number of people out there. And that we're all just sort of on this journey of trying to figure out what the heck sure. we're up to, and and sure. and accepting the fact that life is full of life is inherently full of all of these struggles, and that figuring out how to be okay with that is something that's a that's a, an art in itself. I think it certainly is. <laughs> certainly is. Uh, so I am curious, also, what what photographers or creators in general? Uh, I, maybe they're an underwater basket uh motorized basket dance class instructor yeah. <laughs> really you really enjoy yeah Gosh, that was outrageous how did i come up with that one i don't know that's something i would be into though yeah i bet i bet if you I can, can find tell. me someone that's uh over that like that niche i'll uh definitely hop right in only truly deeply creative people are into that kind of thing and i can tell <laughs> I can tell. I look into your eyes and I can, I can tell. But um, yes. what creators are you, what inspire you? So um, I, once I like really got into photography after like I graduated high school, I had a, um, one of my best friends, um, his name is Kessler Otley. He and I like really got into photography at the exact same time. And um, he had found like an old Nikon F3, like, film SLR that like his one of his grandparents who had passed away like had given to him years before and that he hadn't ever touched and it was just in phenomenal shape it's worth a lot of money these days I, um, I, I feel so like I wish that that was in my inheritance yeah same. like I would have found and, that with, as a photographer and, and my it would have been such a wonderful experience yeah and like and I, like we were so focused on like taking photos together that like 
he would let me like shoot a roll on the F3 and like I and that's kind of how I like fell in love with the film photography and like once we once we got our hands on um, a bunch of 35 millimeter cameras we were like our we became pretty disappointed with digital photography for a minute because we were using like crop sensor crop sensor cameras that were just like pretty cheap and um I was like, man, like there's this 30, like 35 millimeter, like this is like a whole new world for me. Like, cause like, it's like a full, it's like a full frame sensor, like the feel, like everything about it was just yeah, like, shooting with, is it shooting with film? Is that what you mean? The third, yeah. like mm -hmm. so true 35, not so much a full frame digital sensor. Correct. Correct. But like sh shooting on a 35 um, millimeter film camera was like shooting on like a full frame digital. Like I, I was like, I'm able to capture so much more with this. Um, and so Kessler and I ended up buying like a camera together. So like we were seriously shooting all, every day, all day together. Um, and so like we, we, we shared cameras, we shared gear, we were just like doing a, whatever. And he's the one who I like traveled the most with like in those first few years when um, it was harder for me to find other people who were willing to hop in on road trips because I mean now they all want to because clearly I achieved my goal with my photography which is to inspire people so now I can find people that, that want to go but like back then I would be like yeah Kessler and I are driving up to like the Grand Teton National Park it's like a four-hour drive does anyone want to go and it was just crickets and then yeah not, not anymore people are, are into it which is which is fun but uh, so Kessler has always been like somebody that's would have been one of my biggest inspirations and like um, as, as I got more into social media, I found like other like-minded, like creators and photographers, um, who've really inspired me. Um, and like, I've, who I've become friends with, like people that I've, I've just had purely like found through the internet and like followed them on Instagram. Um, there are two in particular, uh, Sam Elkins and Andrew Kearns. There are two people who I really admire and, um, really look up to Sam ended up moving here from, uh, San Francisco for a while. And he just, I, I met him the other day. Did you really? I bumped into him in a coffee shop. Oh, that's amazing. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it was uh, my wife recognized him. I didn't know who he was, but my wife oh. recognized him. And we sat down and spoke. Was it Sam? That, that may have been Sam Larson. There's a lot of Sams. In, in no, I, uh, it was, I think it was Sam Elkins. He just moved away, right? Oh, and he was in town again? He was, oh, I don't know. I think it was right before he left to be at. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I that makes more sense. he was in the process of moving. Gotcha. Yeah. So like it, it was probably a couple a month or so ago, two months ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe so. Okay. That makes more yeah, sense. That, yes. That was, that was yeah. like the timeline that, that I met him. Gotcha. Yeah. So both of those two guys have been massive like influences and um, inspirations for me, just like the way that they create and like how they work and like their work ethic. I've spent a lot of time with them, especially Sam after he moved here. Um, yeah. We, when we've like taken trips together and just like seeing how he worked and seeing how he like edited, seeing how he just like, just everything was just so inspirational for me. So like, there's a lot of people like that. Um, and Andrew, when it came to like, Andrew got into YouTube for a while and he's a, he's a phenomenal like vlogger. He makes great cinematic stuff. Um, and that was just, it has, was also really inspiring because I'm like, you there's no need to ever like box yourself in. Um, and just because you feel like you're really good at one thing doesn't mean that you can't try something else. So, um, definitely those, and that, like, there, there are so many people that like, I still like that I have never met that I just admire from afar on, Inst on Instagram. But, um, for me, the biggest inspirations are people that like, it's not that I'm only just seeing their work, um, but I'm seeing like how they work and like, I'm seeing, um, just how they approach everything. And when I can experience that from like a very personal level, I think that is what's most inspiring to me because I feel like my photography is very personal. It's personal in the feel it's personal to me. It's personal in the way that like I enjoy it most when I'm with my friends. So like, um, so when I get that same experience with people who I look up to, it's, it's incredibly inspirational for me. Yeah, sure. And, um, and I'm curious, you know, what was something that was particularly interesting about uh, Sam, for example, his workflow that was inspiring to you? Well, his workflow in particular, um, the way he just like, I mean, it, it's, it's weird because I would see him like shoot in person and then like later would also be editing photos. So it's like seeing how he approached it in person, like when he was actually taking the photos versus like to when he was editing, it just was, it seems so cohesive. Like he, it's like, when he was thinking about his editing process, he already like while he was shooting, he was thinking about his editing process and how he was going to approach editing all these photos. And I mm. like thinking those as like 
as one cohesive experience rather than I'm taking all these photos. I'm going to edit all these photos later. It was like, it was like all one in the same kind of like, he like yeah. was shooting with like future stuff in mind. And I thought that was, that kind of like blew my mind a little bit. I was like, Dang. like, I don't know why I hadn't thought about things like that before, but for some reason, like with him, it was like so apparent. It was like, everything was so definitive and um, like, it's like every, every shot had like a purpose that, that fulfilled something that he was trying to achieve. Mm, this, I mean, and I think this is the value of hanging out with other creators because you, it's, it was something that was pretty simple. There's nothing iconic or revolutionary about what he's, what he's, what he's yeah. doing. Or there may be, but not necessarily. And it's, it's just the way it's the collection of things and how they all work together and fit into a nice ball. And then you see that as a creator and it, sparks a thought in you that you may have never had minus that person's interaction. And that's super interesting. But yeah, I, I, I just sure. recently came back from New York city. I went and hung out with a couple of uh, YouTube crew, well, a lot of people, but specifically two YouTube creator friends that we work with closely. And I slept on a futon in their office. And what this allowed me to do is have the, the I was able to watch them carry out just their normal creative day which was this very motivated very <laughs> driven type of experience where they're sort of popping in and out of the office and they have meetings to be at, be at and you know this guy, he's going over to a coffee shop to work on something and he's, yeah. he's got to pick up something there was just this energy in the air and i and the way that I describe it is I feel like I, I went to New York City and drank jet fuel and then came back to Utah. And now I'm ready to destroy the universe. Like That's a, that's a good feeling to have. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, that's, and that's something that I'm trying where I think I have a lot of room to grow is, you know, work ethic and, and motivation and mm -hmm. uh, figuring out how to actually be productive not in not just for the sake of being productive, but be productive directly towards my end goal, which are those are two different things. Like I spent a lot of time growing up when I was growing up being productive towards growing myself as a creator and learning. So like, for example, I'm I can do some pretty fun, crazy stuff in like After Effects and like yeah. motion graphics funness because I just really enjoyed learning about that. So I'm very at home in a in a software that's pretty advanced. Yeah, but, it is. Right, right. But and there's and there's still like I've been using it for years and I I still don't know what's going on with probably eighty percent of it. It's it's great, but uh, but that did not maybe indirectly, but it did not directly lead to me accomplishing the goals that are most important to me in life. So that I've learned that there's a difference between sort of indirect productivity and direct productivity. Yeah, for sure. And no, yeah, that's incredibly valid. Yeah. And there are some people in the world that are so dialed in to that sort of direct productivity towards mm -hmm. what they're up to. And these are the people that I think excel at actually accomplishing yeah. goals. Uh, and I, I want to be more of that, you know? Same. Yeah. It's like, it's, and it's a skill that's, that you can use in any field, really. It's not specific to like creating photos or video or whatever, but it's some sure. people that have that like productivity gene that they've worked on and like achieved. It's, yeah, it's certainly incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm curious what, uh, so you have your photography world and then you have, yeah. you know, you, you uh, work over here at a, a software company. I'm curious, and this is just sort of a weird bonus question that I just came up with because I'm just, I, I think it would be interesting to talk about. Uh, how have the two maybe influenced each other, if at all? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. Uh, you know, I, directly with the work I'm doing, um, I don't know how, how about, about how much overlap there is between like my photo work and my software work, but just philosophically, like the way I think about, um, just the way I think about like the, the, the world of photography that I'm in and then the world of software that I'm in, um, I think I'm able to apply like the same, like type of passion for it, I guess. Cause I, I definitely haven't like, it's, it's not like, I'm like, oh, this is the day job that I, that I hate just to make it through the day. Like it's something it's, it's helped me develop a passion for something I didn't know I could be passionate about, I guess, because like I, like when I first started getting into photography, I was like, oh, this is like, this is fun. Like, this is interesting. I didn't realize how big it was going to become for me. And when I started working this company, I was like, yeah, like this is like, 
a, like a pretty solid place. Like they treat me super well. It's like a, it's a fun company to be at, but like, I didn't realize that I could push myself into becoming passionate about something until like photography showed me that I can do that with, with photography. Like, why can't I do it with software? Um, and why can't I do it with like, like anything else really? So I think the way I approach photography has kind of been the same way I've been approaching this job at my software company. Like, it's like, I well, it's, it's, it's easier for me now to develop a passion for something because I kind of know what it takes. I know, I know what I need to put in in order to take from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and even just for selfish reasons, if, if nothing else, like I know I can get things out of what I'm doing. If I work hard, if I put in, if I like have that passion for it. And so I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing that's, that's kind of hooks my two worlds together, I suppose, is just my ability to develop passion for things. Well, and the the pressure that comes with, with the world of business and making sure things get done on time yeah. is hugely beneficial for oh, well, anything you're trying to do. Yeah. But if you if you're trying to be a photographer and you're you know, you want to you want to grow and find some version of success that you're after, it, any one of those things is gonna take hard work and like putting yourself around uh, putting yourself around the work and the people that will help you uh, help you figure out how to find that within yourself mm-hmm. is I think, I think an interesting thing to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah. And there's, there's certain, certainly things like my um, dedication to like editing photos and like meeting deadlines has like, it's something that translates pretty easily to like a regular work environment. Um, but yeah, on the philosophical level, definitely more about like passion and, and learning to love what I'm doing, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I'm also curious when you take a stroll back into a canyon or where, where what have you, um, what do you tend to look for? What what interests you in the world? So, I mean, I kind of look for I, like when you're in these places in Utah, especially when there's just like so many like beautiful things surrounding you. It's kind of hard to feel like. Um, like you can capture it with like a camera. And I know that's a, that's certainly not unique to Utah. There are places where cameras just don't do it justice or whatever. Um, but when but I also like, when you're surrounded by a lot of other people who do the same thing, right? Oh, There's a lot definitely. of photographers in Utah. It's like, Oh, how do I, how do I do it? So, any I differently than yeah. the, this guy over here who I look up to. Yeah. So I think there are kind of two main things that like when I go out, I look for it. it and this mainly applies to like when I'm sh- like more interested in shooting like landscape stuff um, because like it, it's a bit of a different experience when you're with like people or like on a trip or whatever. But like if I like just go out and take photos by myself, like I regularly do, um, I kind of look for two things and kind of like what shot can I create that has the most atmospheric feel where I'm like able to get the most out of a single photo to be able to experience what I'm experiencing right now. Like what shot can I take that shows the most I could possibly show to like give what, what establishes the gestalt of what you're trying. Exactly. To do. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm trying to capture this place. Like what photo can I take that like emphasizes how I feel in this moment and like what I'm seeing. And then also I look for like detail shots. Like I love, um, and I love the contrast of those two things. I like trying to create a photo like as big as possible and see as much as possible, but then also like, very small detail stuff. Like I, I know, especially like when there's really interesting, like textures, like in the ground, like it, when it snows or when it's fall and there's like colored leaves on the ground. Like I love that type of stuff. I love, I love detail shots of, of, um, and, and like it also like referencing those photos later on and like, um, going back to my photos of like times past and I get to compare those two things, like in the same, like photo or like collection, I'll see like a very detailed shot, but then also the atmospheric stuff that I, was looking for and I it just it helps me feel like that feeling I had again you know Mm -hmm. it's it's I love the context that those things can provide and yeah it's it's always a good good feeling to reference back photos and remember how you felt when you took those photos I think that's the one of my favorite things about photography in general but also what I try to accomplish when I'm out shooting is like what's going to make the most interesting thing to, to look back on and mm. if I if I want to relive this experience, if I want to feel the same way again, how can I take a photo that captures that? Mm. Yeah, it's like it's it's not just about capturing uh, capturing it visually, but mm. f- figuring out a way to communicate a feeling that you felt there. Yep, 100%. This, this is where I've always thought that <clears throat> post processing 
really comes in handy because agreed you can so for example if you're going out in the snow you can um you can make your tones very cold uh to the point that it's vis it's visibly cold and you can make people feel that chill when they're looking at the thing or if you, you know you're on a beach you can make them feel very warm or you can mm -hmm. i've always thought that polaroid like the look of polaroid film sort of has this effect where it takes a photo and turns it into a scene if that makes mm -hmm. sense something that it's a scene that you're experiencing and not just um a, a shot a, a shot of of something on a visual level it, it, it has this deep quality to it and i love that and it's also of course very nostalgic but so when you're holding the camera up to your eye to take a photo uh what are you looking for compositionally what's something that's that you pay close attention to I mean, it, I guess it kind of just goes back to the last question, I suppose, like trying to just capture it, like fit as much as I possibly can to the frame. Like I'm not, I'm not a mil uh, minimalist photographer by any means. I'm not somebody who's like, um, like striving for that in my art, I suppose. But like when it comes to, and, and I guess this more, this also like applies to situations where I'm like traveling with friends or whatever. It's like, what photo can I take that? like tells the best story. Like if I'm taking a photo of like, of people, um, how can I include the background into those images? How can I like mess with the scale? Like I love, uh, like it became super popular on Instagram like um, a few years ago uh, to just like get super wide angle lenses and take like massive like photos of like waterfalls or whatever. And it kind of felt, I mean, and I love that look, but like it kind of felt like small and doesn't like feel like realistic or lifelike, I suppose. And so, like I've always felt like when I mess with scale like a bunch if I'm like I often use like a 24 to 70 and like when I'm zoomed in to like 50 to 70 and I'm able to like pull backgrounds in to like my subject and if I'm able to take photos of like friends but pull the background scenery in it just like creates such a more interesting photo to me mm -hmm. um and just like more realistic to how like it felt like in the moment I suppose because like things often in life are they feel bigger than how they look when you look back on it with photos. So um, I, I love the feeling of like, I, I, anyway, I love including background images with um, like with my subject matter or in background landscapes, anything like that. And that's kind of how like I got into like other areas of photography, even like I was super into outdoor photography and all of a sudden like I had people hitting me up. They're like, yeah, I'm getting married like soon. Would you like want to like take these outdoor photos, but also like with, me and my fiance in front of them. I'm like, yeah, sure. I guess I'll give wedding fiance or excuse me, engagement photography a shot because why not? And so I did that for a minute and I was like, basically just like shooting outside, like with my friends, except there's people who are here to get married or whatever. So yeah. And so like, I think the way I went about photos in general helped me like expand into other areas of photography because um, I think it applies to so many different ways you can think about photos, but like, I just love like that feeling of capturing a scene and capturing your, that might not, the scene might not be your subject, but like your subject is part of that scene. And so being able to capture that on the same image is something that I've always been um, striving for with like almost every photo I take. Mm, I, th I just picture you standing in a, a nice open vista and you set up the shot, you spent 20 minutes and then you pull your he head back from the camera and go, okay, you can come in now. <laughs> It's almost, it's, that's honestly not far off. Like sometimes like I've had like shoots where, where I'm like, like I'll go back through my photos after the fact and like, I'll, I'll, I'll like have all these landscape photos from the shoot. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I was also there to like take engagement photos. Because they're supposed to like be a, people. Yeah. They're, they're complaining because they're too small in the photo. Yeah, I'm like, look how cool this looks. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that mountain was beautiful. Did you see yeah. the texture on the side of the rocks there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I've... I've definitely like it's that's that's definitely not far off. I love like setting up my shop visually with like surroundings and I'm, all right, come on over because that's how this is gonna go. So I don't really do like wedding photography stuff anymore because um, I just kind of don't need to. And um, I like during the freelance game that was when uh, that's where like the money in Utah is because everyone's getting married constantly here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that was that was fun. But yeah. What, what, uh, I can't remember how we you... started talking about wedding photography, but here we are. <laughs> uh, I think it was uh, you. You started. You oh, were, that's I you was were saying about people how, in or something. Yes. Yeah. The way I think about photography helped me. Get, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I remember.
So what um what's a what's do you have a favorite place that you've been? Um, like in Utah or outside of Utah? Just in general, just a a place that that blew your mind. Well, you know, I I kind of feel it makes me kind of sad that like I don't like when I think of those places, I don't necessarily immediately think Utah, even though Utah is just it is mind blowing. Like you talked about, like when you first like came here, you're like, whoa, like these mountains, and I I. I wish I could experience that feeling for the first time again. And like, I, like I moved here when I was like five. So like, I don't remember that feeling per se. And, um, but like I've gone places in, in Utah and I'm just like, man, I cannot believe like I'll be hiking like in the mountains and I find like some incredible view. And I'm like, I just can't believe this place is real. I can't believe like I live like an hour. Like I, I, I got off work, went to my house like drove up here and like it's been like an hour since like I left work like that's it's absurd that like that this could be possible yeah, so like yeah. there's things like that happen to me all the time like in Utah and there's so many places in like the Wasatch like these the mountain range right here that I'm just obsessed with um but like since I got into photo like one of the places that I love the most um is Grand Teton National Park like I I was talking about um and I went the first time I had ever gone there was with was with Kessler that photo friend and it was just the two of us and um and i hadn't really i'd been to like jackson wyoming but i had never been to like the teton national park um and i remember kessler and i like we drove up late after like on a thursday night or something we slept in like a parking garage and then the next morning we were like heading into the park like as the sun was rising and i was just like whoa like you serious like look at these these mountains just blew my mind i was like okay this is like what people that's saying a lot from somebody who yeah in utah i know i was like okay this is what it feels like. This is this must be what it feels like when people come to Utah for the first time and see mountains. Because I was like, I've never seen these mountains before, and they're just phenomenal. Um, yeah, so like that place will always be special to me because of that feeling. And neither of us had really been there. We like that whole trip was we went on like a canoe backpacking trip. Like we rented a canoe, like paddled across like two lakes to some remote campsite, and like it was it was absurd. That trip was so fun, but. Um, yeah, so that place will always be spe- be special to me, and I've gone there so many times um, since then. But um, yeah, they're just like in Utah. I think um, other than I, I'm not counting Grand Teton National Park, but it, I love how close we are to that place. But my favorite place in Utah, there's a there's a peak called Sunset Peak, and it's um, it's right in the back of like it's up at the top of Albion Basin and Little Cottonwood Canyon, and big cottonwood canyon and american fork canyon so like mm-hmm. there's this peak that's just like right on the top of all three of these canyons and you can look down into each one and like you can see all the way up to like the mountain ranges in ogden you can see like almost all, all the way out to like um the southern mountain ranges like in the south end of utah county it's just crazy like that place is that place is probably blowing my mind in utah more than anywhere else but um yeah we're we're freaking lucky with our mountains here it's just a, yeah. it's a good place to be well, so I'll tell you in the hopes of, of making you feel this magic once more. <clears throat> the first time I saw the mountains in person in Utah, I landed uh, I landed at the airport at night. My We hopped in my friend's car to drive to his house. And I look out and I just see these black walls of Mordor. Yeah. <laughs> to oh, the, yeah. Uh, to, I think to the east. And I said, are those the mountains? <laughs> And then I, I thought, oh my gosh, like I, I'm from South Carolina. So I, I have, I had never seen anything like that before. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I love that. It's truly like landing on another planet for, for somebody uh, who has, who didn't grow up here. This yeah. is why I get frustrated when people, a lot of people are very jaded about Salt Lake City in Utah. They are. Um, and it's, it's mind blowing to me because it's such a, it's such a, uniquely beautiful place and all these landscapes just sort of are crushed together and you can just you drive through this weird uh gradient of desert mm-hmm. all the way down and yeah. the uh, one of my favorite places on earth is i don't know it might be my favorite i have a hard time picking favorites though notoriously uh, i really love moab yeah just it's because amazing. Of the the insanity of the landscape it just doesn't it, it just doesn't like it doesn't make sense. It's yeah, no, it really doesn't. Like any, like you have canyonlands and arches like right next to each other, and you're like, how? 
It's like even downtown, you know, you drive into this canyon where the, uh, the Colorado River runs through, and you just have these 700-foot sheer cliffs, yeah, red sheer red cliffs rock. on the side. And you would think you would have to go to Mars to see something like that. And, um, and then Dead Horse Point is a particularly yeah. interesting place to me. I, I, it's, I think just from uh, the level of just appreciating the beauty of the world, that's a really special place. It's, Agreed. And for people who have never been there or seen it, it's very similar to, I guess, the Grand Canyon uh, to some extent, but yeah. also different. I understand, but I mean, <laughs> you look, you look, you look off of the edge, and you see the the most vast landscape. Like your mind, it, it's the sort of landscape where when you walk up to the edge and you look over, your head kind of does this thing where it, like it like you get dizzy. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's so incredible. Yeah. It's fantastic. I love, I love, and I love taking people like places like that for the first time. Like I've had friends come in from out of town and like, I mean, I love showing people around Salt Lake, but like taking people to like the deserts of Utah is, is something that the, the vast majority of people like don't ever get to see. Yeah. And so like when I get to take people to show them places like that, it's just, it's super fun. Like I remember, taking people to Canyonlands for the first time and Moab in general. And it's just, people are like, how does this, why, why is this a thing? How I'm like mm -hmm. science, man. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Yeah. And another thing for me is I've been, uh, I've been getting, I think this stems from me moving to Utah and becoming interested in the landscape. I've been getting more and more interested in, uh, the geography. Well, I guess it would be, would it be geo geology or geography, the study of landscape. Right. Uh, geography yeah geography. <laughs> geology <laughs> is rocks my friend's a geologist i should know ah okay there we go i was trying to figure out which one was maps and which one was just lit all right we're gonna carry on uh obviously school did did not do a lot for us but uh i've been learning about the history of of how these places were kind of were you know formed and where things came from and why this canyon looks this way and what they believe happened here and this sort of yeah. thing and also learning that, and not not so much going back, going back, uh, you know, millions of in millions of years, but more so just in relatively recent history, the things that have changed the landscape around here, and the way that landscape changes all the time. And we look at what's happening in Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii is is it's adding on to the island like as we speak. Yeah. You know? It's it's amazing, and you don't really tend to think of it that way because our landscapes around us tend to be pretty static. But I learned about you know Lake Bonneville, which is supposedly what we would be underneath right now if yeah. it was still here. <laughs> and I learned that they believe that that it broke, it sort of breached up north near Idaho, cut a flood channel. I mean, this was maybe ten thousand years ago. They say, cut a flood channel out towards Idaho drained out and created snake river have you been to snake river i have it's a great place yeah uh, which snake oh, river is another Cold place that, that just is such an incredible landscape that's completely different than moab yep but you have this flat land looks like you know oklahoma or something and then all of a sudden the canyon just cuts massive down. deep canyon yeah. yeah and so they say that that this massive flood carved out that river yeah and uh, and also that you can see the 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 river channel and what it used to be, which are these big cliffs on the side with the smaller river within. But the, it was carved out by this, the, you know, these huge, these huge flows of water. And that's that's like super interesting stuff to me just to think about the possibility of, of you know, I mean, it's it, you know, it's fully conceivable that this has happened and that, you know, it can happen uh, in different capacities maybe much they tend to be much smaller now but it can happen yeah. in different capacities now and all of that has grown my love for for landscapes just trying to think about how they kind of came about in the way that they did yeah for sure yeah that stuff is so interesting i it goes way over my head 100 percent of the time but i still love hearing about it and pretending like i understand <laughs> um yeah i, I what I like to do is I like to listen to people who can are gifted communicators who can actually explain this to me mm -hmm. in a way that makes sense and is, is really intriguing. And so, um, so I've come across a few people who are just good storytellers around that. And 
And yeah. It, it, and so it makes me want to go back and go, oh, now they understand what's going on here. It's, it makes a little more sense. Um, but it, anyway, okay. Well, I, uh, what are your goals moving forward with your creative stuff? I honestly just want to like really keep doing what I'm doing and just keep seeing new places and documenting those experiences. Like I said, I want to get into video as well to have like another reference point back to like, what I'm doing. And I want to be able to, um, to share those as well. But um, really it's just to continue seeing more, like meet, meeting more people and just like doing what I, I think I do best. And that's just like make and save memories. Like that's just going to be, it's like my overall goal. Um, and I think that's just something I'm never going to like, I mean, there's unlimited numbers of places to go and memories to be made. So like, it's something I'm never going to be complete in, but like at the end of the day, I just like want to have like a body of work and like a collection of photos that like I could pass on and someone would be like, damn, this dude did a bunch of stuff and I got a bunch <laughs> of people and like, that's cool. And yeah. yeah, that's pretty much, that's, that's like really what it comes down to is I just, I want to be able to like tell my life through like photos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think we, we pretty much touched on this, but if there's any area where you can sort of, if you have any more thoughts, uh, if somebody, when somebody looks at your, your feed and your body of work, what would you hope that they take away or experience? I would love for people, I, like, I want people to just appreciate like the places we have in general. Like I want people to take care of this planet. I want people to like respect the earth and not, you know, like these places need to be preserved and I want them to be around for other people to see like long after I'm gone. So I want people to gain like, a very real appreciation for these places. And I want people to like feel that from me that like, I do appreciate these places because like, I would never disrespect anywhere. Like I, I get to travel to, I would never like harm the landscape or anything, like, anything like that. So um, I want people to know that I have an appreciation for these places. And I like hope that inspires other people as well to protect these places because I get scared. They, you know, they get destroyed. Like, I mean, we've seen places like, I mean, there was like that dude down in Goblin Valley in Utah who pushed the thing over and like the guy in at Cape Kiwanda in Oregon who pushed over the balancing rock because they, yeah, just for what mm -hmm. I just don't, it's, it makes me kind of sick to think about, but like, I just, I, I want people to appreciate it and I want people to not take it for granted and I want people to protect it. And I hope that they get that sense from, from me. And like, I hope they know that, like, I feel that way about the planet and hopefully they do too, or, or the, hopefully they should. Very good, man. Cool. All right, I think this is a good place to wrap up. Cool. I will, I will put your uh, your links below, and I would love to hear everyone's thoughts about what we've been speaking Same. about. Come and, talk, come talk trash to me if you want. It's fine. Yeah, come talk trash to Kyle, not to me, but to Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh his, my way. His name is Kyle Ipso, so you're gonna he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. That's very oh. true. Like a, a tropical storm. Yeah, I mean, look at those glasses. You know, um, so. Uh, thank you again, man, for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it as well because this is I always I can always talk about photo stuff and all of this. I can talk for hours and hours on end. So that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yep, and here I am. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd love to do this again sometime. You know how to reach me, Kylipso, Instagram. You know. Beautiful, beautiful. I can just like run up the road, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh yell. yeah. I can toss a rock over to your apartment because I yeah, you could just it. throw one through my window and I'll I honestly think I, I could deliver like I think my drone. You're with it. You're well within drone distance. I can. Oh, fly we gotta a try that. Here. I have one too. We can meet up and kiss. <laughs> oh my god, I would in, love in that. a very professional sense, though. Right. Totally. Yeah. In a yeah. safe way, where like propellers aren't getting like inter intermingled right. or whatever and broken so right. and yeah. i know this is right. our first conversation i don't want to spend too much time connecting you Good know call. it's like just like really? a friendly friendly drone kiss yeah for sure well, yeah, all right we'll plan a drone date i'm excited okay <laughs> very good like a like a like a pet get together we'll have our exactly. drones play, play and walk together that's good that's good okay hey thanks for everybody uh for watching and listening goodbye <laughs>